The issue of insecurity remains the most pressing challenge that the Buhari administration is facing. Now, this is coming even as various acts of violent clashes continue from the northeastern corner right down to the southwestern part of the country. Uh, the state security service had warned several times weeks earlier that conflicts that would assume an ethno-religious dimension were in the offing and now Undo and uh, Oyo states have become the epicenter of violent clashes between ethnic Fulanese or Hausa community and the indigenous Yorubas. Now, in this report, uh, we take a look at the issues and efforts to stem the tide. <laughs> All right, uh, this is part of what we'll be talking about in the next uh, couple of minutes. Uh, I have with me in the studio a public affairs analyst, Akin Fatunke, as well as uh, Dayo Lomuagun. Gentlemen, good morning. Nice to see you both. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Nice to see you both. Great. Good morning, Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the issue of ethnic clashes or religious clashes is not new to Nigeria by any means. However, by ev for every day that passes, we expect that we should, we should understand each other the more as a people. But at any little provocation between two persons, there is always the, 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 the people f trying to find out the origin of this person, where is he from, and the other person, where is he from, and sometimes gets into, uh, uh, degenerates into something further. But let me start with you, uh, Akin. The, the point there is, since even before 1960, we've had our issues based on you are from that ethnic group, I'm from this ethnic group, but over so close to 60 years up, uh, up until now, we've not been able to master, tolerate, understand each other's differences and know how to you know, handle each other when we go ahead. Why is this so? Clearly, um, even intermarriages boomed in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and um, there was absolutely no problem. I schooled in Hamadou Bele University's area. Uh, I am a Yoruba man, and um, everything went neat and dandy. Uh, before then, I was at Federal Government College in Sokoto. I had the best of friends across um, the various divides, whether it's religion, whether it's um, uh, class. I dare say class. Uh, we had crowns with their children there. And then um, we had the plebiscites and we had the proletariat. The Hoi we were all mingling together. Things were going on fine. Though, then we still had this semblance of federal character, which I must say has worsened now. Um, I think the major crisis that we are facing in terms of insecurity is what I'll put to two factors. One, um, failure of um, security intelligence, a deliberate failure of security intelligence. I use that description, a deliberate, in the sense that uh, one is really not sure whether it's a capacity problem or whether it's just a laid back issues, um, as in everything about Nigeria. And then secondly, um, some natural environmental factors. Uh, what uh, Max Weber, in his social conflict theory, talked about the quest for power, get power, once you get power, and then you want to load it um, over others. Uh, in the present dispensation, the perception is out clear that, um, you know, the largesse of states, uh, the political appointments, so to speak, even the coloration of uh, Mr. President since 2015, um, initially, which I, which I like to say was a Freudian slip, um, to indicate that uh, certain region did not uh, vote for him, and so, you know, his response to why um, certain ethnic uh, nationalities were not there present in his, in his government. Um, I want to believe that that should have been corrected, but, you know, as we went on, 
from days to months into years, it seems as if the yearning gap just kept on. Um, I also look at the environmental factors, I mean, natural environmental factors, um, the climate change, you know, the Western Sahel, um, the deliberate policy of governments to open the borders to allow people um, come in. And then when these people came in um, from a particular set of people, uh, uh, we must not uh, profile, um, headsmen, uh, criminals came amongst them and then it went on and on but we did not clearly see a deliberate i call it a deliberate act on the part of government okay to nip it in the board all right so, so that's we, that we, we have what we have okay now Daniel, let me bring you in here uh recall that uh, about a week ago or, or a little above a week uh, more than a week ago the, the State Security Service, or the Department of State Services, as the case may be, uh, warned. In fact, it was one of the headlines, major headlines on some newspapers that, uh, that some Nigerians or some elements are trying to foment ethno-religious uh, crisis in the country. And from the report we read earlier on, it was clear that the, the security agencies knew something was going to happen. This is not the first time when it comes to security reports ahead of time trying to, you know, from the feelers they get. But these are not able to still prevent the breakdown of law and order. I wonder what you make of that. Uh, you see, I think, uh, honestly, we... I'm not a security expert, mm. but I think uh, whatever information, intelligence we're getting from the, 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 the security outfit, uh, you see, a, a, a common man on the street will possibly tell you this will happen. Okay, so because for me, if you continue to give a signal that, oh, something is going to go wrong, uh, but nobody has been arrested, and you can't tell us who is behind this, nobody has been prosecuted, we are not seeing results. Uh, the kind of tension that is going on in the country, the kind of mistrust that is going on in the country, it, it, even a baby in the womb should be able to predict that uh, something was going to go wrong. So for me, it's not enough to tell us something is going to go wrong, uh, but you should be able to nip it at the board. And clearly, like he's mentioned, it is, uh, it's going to be a difficult one. Fundamentally, I think the, the issue of Nigeria, the issue of insecurity around here, is especially between the ethnic groups, is, is bordered on trust. Mm. Whether from the early days of the independence and the civil war, and, but it continued to grow worse. And he has communicated into this. But I wonder what is fueling this distrust. We are here. Everyone is complaining. Everyone is complaining of being marginalized, whether it is from the north or from the south or from the east or whatever. So where is this distrust coming from? You see, it is all about perception. Okay. And most times, I mean, sometimes the perception becomes the reality. Hmm. So once people begin to perceive this is a recurring decimal, at some point, and you confirm their fears that you're going to be in trouble as a country. And clearly, in the last four or five years, it's gone worse. Now, you came in as the president and told us you, you don't belong to, you belong to everybody, you don't belong to anybody. Uh, but clearly, that is, I mean, like you mentioned, we have seen this marginalization. Now, you cannot trust the, the Easterners, for example, with some offices. You can even the southwest, even the, even the south. But, we but, is, but isn't isn't that the same kind of perception you're talking about? Because if if we say, because it was not established anywhere that a certain people from certain regions are not trusted to hold certain offices, that has not been established. Isn't that part of the perception we're talking, we may be talking about? You see, uh, uh, as the perception once it becomes like this is the reality. Mm -hmm. Now we have the federal character. We we know how appointments are made in the country, but if from the history, whatever we have in the past and whatever we have now, if, I mean, we see a wide variance, mm -hmm. then we begin to suspect what exactly is going wrong. And for me, it's a, the issue of insecurity with the clashes here and there. It's not a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Have we seen our army, our security outfit, all of them cannot handle this? Now, if we can't handle this, can't we call for help? Mm -hmm. You see, but it is the will. And so Nigerians have suddenly realized that it looks like it's a deliberate, it's a willful thing for these clashes to be there. I don't know what agenda that mm -hmm. looks like to deliberately destabilize people, destabilize your own country. 
I mean, because you, you clearly what but, was going but on. But to, to what aim and to what, to what end? To what benefit? What would, what would I ask? tell you, <laughs> at the end of the day, everything rises, falls on leadership. Mm. And um, the essence of leadership is to manage crisis. Um, every country in the world had a way of managing uh, their crisis. And when you are appointed as a leader, you come and lead. Uh, what I see here is more of a bit of a rulership. Uh, as opposed to, you know, to leading, stepping back, being fair, being, um, you know, a consensus builder, be able to listen, be able to communicate well. Um, when uh, um, President Buhari came in, uh, it was clear he had, in my own opinion, a relatively large pan-Nigerian trust the perception that you're still talking about, mm. the incorruptible, um, we had him at one point in time when he chased bandits, you know, into far mm. uh, Niger charge. Mm. And then we are, we, we are, we are really not um, seeing, seeing that uh, anymore. I mean, I think the first first post will be, yes, there are certain laws I will, I will put, you know, others that, that, that will agree to and obey, that was a first pause. If there were security reasons why some people, after the court had asked that they be released and not released, we are not being communicated with. Yes, I know security issues, you don't really communicate, but in various ways people should communicate. I think Mr. President keeping mom in the face of obvious, clearly, you know, um, some people coming out and saying we are responsible for this violence that has gone on, and we belong to say, for instance, Mieti Allah, um, we are taking the reprisal, and no, nothing, nothing concrete. I'm not saying it's not saying anything. It's not loud enough from the man uh, at the top. We knew, uh, everybody knew that the Land Use Act clearly, clearly, clearly had an issue with. Uh, um, you know, the grazing reserves, you know, and all, all that. You know, land use act actually states that the land belongs to the state and, and the governors. And then governors have allowed people to come in here and there. And people eventually came in here and there. I talked about, you know, uh, failure of, of intelligence. Intelligence will have indicated certain things were happening. And if you listened to some of the people that were affected, True or false, we hear that you say, well, if you go to police, you cannot get anything from police. And true, true to type, these people do a lot of mayhems and nothing happens. After all, um, uh, Chief Olufalai will not be somebody that we say we don't know. Uh, uh, Chief Fashion or T. Wood lost you know, his daughter in such a gruesome way, like so many other people were lost. We are not going to say we, we don't know them or they were lying. And that all what we just see is commiseration, commiseration. Before the end of that commiseration, another one then just goes on. I think the centralization of the Nigerian polity, you know, looking at our security apparatus, looking at the police, uh, has been stretched thin, it's not been uh, adequately funded, it's not been creatively looked at as in other climbs, it's not been properly led. You know, I mean, look at what happened uh, at Ibarakwa. Look at what happened in Yewa. Look at what happened uh, in some, even in Lagos, in some parts of Lagos, some skirmishes that went on. All we just hear at the end of the day is that the military will come with either Puff Ada, and we are hearing that Puff Ada, the, the second is coming in. We are living in perpetual fear. Fear of a level of incompetence that has come into securing ourselves. And now you said, you, you said, why is it? I, I told, just told you that I schooled in the north. Mm. During the Matasine, initial Matasine thing, it was a Fulani, a Fulani that came to Medan Kudio Hall. It came from Suleiman Hall at that time. A Fulani that came say, Aki, um, I hear certain things might just be happening. He gave me that information mm. because we were friends. Exactly. Now we are so uh, virtually so divided, we don't even trust, you know, uh, and that trust deficit needs to be plugged. I think um, I am in total agreement with Professor Wole Shoinka, who made a statement about Donald Trump when he was coming in that he was going to be a disaster. 
he, Professor Olusoyinka, has also made a similar, you know, um, diagnosis of the Nigerian situation and said, look, Mr. President, if you want Nigerians to believe that you are not in support of criminality, some of the things that are coming from, from the seat of government is giving a wrong signal. Please come out and come and address Nigerians. That has not happened. And if Mr. President cannot address Nigerians, I happen to know that the presidency is one. I know we have a professor, Oshibaju, that can speak as tempo yeah. anytime, any day. Yeah. We need to be able to but, plug but, but, but this he, right target. But he's targets. not the commander in chief. Well, it, he's the vice uh, president. Uh, uh, he's the as, vice president. As far as, as far as the constitution is concerned, he does the bidding of the president. Uh, the bidding of the president without them be here. You go, go represent me. Go, go do the right thing. Mm. That is what you call delegation. Okay. And if it's not properly delegated. Because that is not properly delegated, we are not hearing anything. The perception is out there, and so it's Sunday Boho will all arise right. from nowhere. All right, let, and let, they let, want to take loss into their hands, yeah. become let, self help. Let, let because me, the people are crying. Let, let me the bring blood Dyer is, in. Blood, blood is flowing. Okay, well, let me bring Dyer in here. Now, the point, the issue of prosecution of people who perpetrate all of these acts is another thing. Like Akin has said, we don't really see prosecution. The security agencies, if they want to work, they know where everyone lives. They know anybody who has done what, at what time, and all of that. But we don't get to see prosecution. Do you think that is uh, part of the major problem or major challenge where people feel they can do these things and get away with? Uh, you see, it's a, it's a major problem we created for ourselves. Mm. Again, the scripture says, uh, when iniquity is not punished, the heart of man is bent to do evil. So because they know there are not going to be any consequence. And uh, so whether it's deliberate, and again, it's about perception. Hmm. Uh, but if uh, we don't see any prosecution, and the people are crying, and people are being killed and made they are raped every day, and nobody is, I mean, you, you, you may be prosecuting people, but when you are not communicating it, so we have not seen this person, this person, that person, yeah being prosecuted and sent to jail or something. Now, it, it begins to give us a signal that uh, this government or the leadership is clearly in support of what is going on. And, and so, and the government will have to do more to be able to prove us wrong. And again, because at some point, because if people feel that there is no consequence for this thing, now you cannot totally blame people who go for self-defense. Because if uh, and, and that will be dangerous. It will be dangerous for everybody. Really dangerous. And, and that's the fear is the way it is going. Except the presidency will actually tell us the truth, face Nigeria and tell us the truth, and arrest the issues. Now we may not have a Nigeria in a few years to come. Dio, you just you just pinpointed mm. it. And to be fair and balanced, leadership is at different um, level. The mm. presidency, there is absolutely no doubt about it in my mind that um, in, enough has not been done. Because of the structure of the Federation, we need to really restructure, we really need to really, you know, uh, reorganize the, police, the policing mm. system, and then we really need to really fight corruption. Uh, you just mentioned the fact that uh, when people are not caught, and when attempts are being made, as was done in Ondo State, mm. and I said, look, we need to begin to do numbering of who is who yeah. in our forest reserves. And suddenly, communication came from the presidency. No, you cannot do that in blanket, mm. in blanket form. That's number one. Okay. Number two is the fact that um, we just continue since 2015. Mr. President always says it sometimes when he, when he talks to friends. Um, people, say, people say to me that uh, they are looking at uh, body language. How will you not look at the body language? We, in my opinion, the most powerful person on earth presently, the most powerful person on earth is our president in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In terms of the kind of power he wields, he wields. in terms of the moral mm. authority he should be mm. able to, in analysis. terms of even mm. When talking about conflicts, look at the answers. People were expecting, you know, uh, my friend, the, the president, you know, Femi Additional, I always say, must the president always talk? But the president must talk <laughs> at 
critical junction. It can have moral suasion. I know yeah. we run in federation. Like, like we see that's the, not to we, take that's we, not to take away the fact we, we, that we have to, we the have state, to, the we state have, governors. Yeah, we, we have, have to round it off now. The what, state what, governors to have responsibilities. Yes, the local governors. Uh, Akin, what we're going to do? Yes, Akin, what we're going to do is. I'm going to arrange a second leg of this discussion because there are so many things. In fact, we've not even looked at uh, some of the solutions and way forward oh, on, yes. on this. So we will uh, find another time for us to talk more on this and then put things in perspective. Thank you so much, Akin Fatunke, for coming on the program. Thank you very much, Mike. Dayo thank you very much for coming as well. Thank you. Really appreciate you. All right.